If you're looking to upload a custom icon into your bubble editor, then this is the tutorial for you. Within this guide, we're going to explain the exact process you need to follow in order to not only source a custom icon, but also be able to upload and customize that icon directly inside your bubble editor. Now, beyond that, we're also going to take things one step further and we're going to explain how your users can actually customize an icon themselves. So if you ever want to allow users to customize the color of any icons within your app, this is going to explain exactly how they can do that. Thankfully, this one is a relatively straightforward process. So I'm going to hand this over to Luca and he's going to walk through everything you need to know. Hello there, Luke here. And today we're going to be going over exactly how we add custom icons into our bubble application and even how to enable our users to be able to change the color of certain icons within our application, just like this. So as you probably know, if we go into our bubble editor over here, we have our visual elements. And under our visual elements, we have the option to add icons. But as you can see, we only have a very limited amount of different icons and you might need a lot more capabilities or you might even have gotten personal and unique icons made off somewhere like Fiverr or created yourself on somewhere like Figma. So how do we actually add those personalized and custom items into our application and how do we actually edit the color and all that kind of stuff. So we're actually going to be working with something called SVG, which is just a file format. And what that stands for is scalable vector graphics, which is basically a type of file format that can be blown up to whatever size you want or shrunk down to whatever size you want without it losing its high resolution because it's kind of made of mathematical formulas and code. And we can actually go into that code and edit the color and stuff like that. And it's really ideal for icons and a lot of companies also have their logo in an SVG format as well for the, for the reason that it can be blown up super big. So the first thing we're going to do is actually just delete this icon here. And we're going to go and grab our HTML visual element over here. And we're going to paste it onto our page because this is where we're going to be actually displaying our SVG file or icon. So we're just going to send that in the middle. And I want the icon to be 100 in width. And I want the icon to be 100 in height. So we're just going to set our parameters to that. And then what we're going to do is actually go to a website and grab the code for our SVG file. Now I've actually found this website called SVG repo and it has a really good database of free SVG downloads. And there are lots of other websites or icon websites, um, but a lot of them, there's a premium plan where you have to pay, um, but this is a good we want over here. So what I'm going to do is we'll go and grab this icon here and we'll download the SVG vector. And as you can see over here, we've got a SVG file format. And what I'm actually going to do is if you click the download, it will open it up for a separate tab in whatever browser you're using. If you right click on our icon over here, we have the option to inspect. But if we click inspect, you can see here what we actually got is our SVG HTML. So what we're going to do is we're just going to right click and then we're going to copy. And then we're going to copy the whole element. Don't get too confused about this. It's basically just copy and paste in it. But this is how you actually get access to the SVG format as a code that can be displayed in our HTML um, visual element. So once you've copied that, what you're going to want to do is go back to your web editor. And literally all you're going to do is delete what's ever in there before and then paste our icon. In. Now, don't get too confused by all of this code. Most of it is unimportant. It's just the shape and style of the actual icon. The only thing we actually need to worry about is this string here, which is the fill, which is actually the color of our icon, the width and the height, which is obviously the dimensions of our icon as well. So as we've done 100 in height and width, I'm just going to change that over here. And again, as you can see, our icon has come up and 
here is where you would edit the color as a hex code, for example. So if I wanted to do my specific color and um, for maybe my application, all you would do is grab the color code. And a quick way to do that is just to grab an icon and then whatever color that you've installed into your application, it will probably be under this banner here. So for this one, let's just pick this color here and this is called hex code so we're just going to copy that and then if we click onto our icon we can actually just paste that straight into here and as you can see we've got our personalized color coming up here which is perfect now one thing i've noticed is that HTML box is looking slightly larger than I would like it to. And if we actually go to our layout tab, the reason why that is, is because I've actually set that the minimum height is 100 pixels when I should have set the maximum height um, is 100. So if I quickly change that, you can see now we've got our icon here. Now, as you can see here, we've got some weird scroll bars here, but if you are to preview it, it comes up completely normally. So you don't need to worry about that when you're actually viewing it in your application. So in the tutorial that I did at the start, how do we actually get users to be able to edit the color within your application? What we're gonna actually wanna do to achieve this is go to our plugins page. So if you go onto the left here and click plugins, we're gonna download this plugin called Air Color Picker. Unfortunately, they've spelled it the American way, um, but we're just gonna have to cope with that for the time being. Um, if we go and add a plugin here and type in Air, then it should come up straight away and you'll be able to click the install button here. Once you've installed that, you're gonna to wanna to go back to your design tab and in our visual elements, you'll see we've got a air color picker. So we're gonna drag that onto the page and we're gonna to go to the layout so we center it. And I'm gonna put 10 pixels on top. And one thing that I've noticed with these color pickers is that for some reason in the preview mode, they're just always really far left on the screen, which is a bit annoying. So what you wanna to do to solve that is basically just click on our icon, click shift on your keyboard, and then click onto the color picker. And then once you've selected both of them, you wanna right click. And then we can group elements within column and then once that column has come up we just click fit width to the content and that's all we need to change and that should keep our color picker within the periphery of our actual icon so now what we want to do is we want to enable this color picker to be able to go into our code and be able to change the color of our icon so what we're going to want to do we're going to click our icon here and we're going to actually add some dynamic text within here so we're going to want to completely delete all of the hex code including the hashtag and then we're going to want to insert some dynamic data and you'll see after you've uploaded the plugin that we're going to have the ability to reference our color picker and we're going to click its value here perfect so now if we preview this just get rid of this and make it a bit cleaner if we preview our application now you can see we've got our color picker and if we change it to red and click select we can change our color if we go to pink we do the same and that's how to add a lot of customization of different things within your application you could even have every single icon within your application connected to this one air picker and so you could completely personalize the whole view of your application and all the buttons within a page using this method. But I hope that helps your current bubble build and I'll see you in the next one. And just like that, you now know how you can not only upload a custom icon into Bubble, but how you can also customize it further, as well as allow your end users to customize it as well. If you found this video useful and you wanted to stay up to date with any additional resources I share, I'd always recommend hitting that subscribe button so that way you can be the first to know whenever I drop a new tutorial. For now though, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.